or you've got a file server that you can temporarily for emergency purposes save a backup to so let me walk you through doing a backup once uh, a manual backup this can be very handy especially in emergency situations so let's go ahead and start went into the actions menu and launch the backup once I want to cover some of the options that you would see now notice it immediately gives you some options it already knows you have a scheduled backup do you want to do this one-time backup or this manual backup based on all the options you set up on your schedule backup that might be perfect for an emergency situation yes I want a full backup uh, of my server onto a network share uh, or I can go to different options so let's take a look at some of the different options that you have this would be choosing exactly what you have as a schedule backup for this emergency one-time backup to say a file server or another external drive as a temporary or emergency situation let's look at the different options let's go next again you get the choice of full server or customize what you want back up and in an emergency you may want to do that I don't need the C drive I just need uh, the data on D etc so we'll go ahead and leave it a full server this is very very important no matter what choice you choose in a backup once or a manual backup listen to this very carefully do not use your dedicated external drive that you use for your normal schedules for this one-time backup so for most of you unless you've got a spare external that you can bring over or another hard drive on the server you're typically going to go to a remote share on another file server so what I did was I went to I'm gonna pull this up I went ahead and pulled up a server that I have on the network and I'm going to save it on VWP dash storage and I'm going to save it in an e volume and I'm going to when when I choose this location this network location and this share it's going to create a folder on that share called Windows image backup and that's where this backup will go if you back up more than say one time it will overwrite this each time that you do it so if you choose the same location and you do another manual backup let's say the next day uh, then it's going to overwrite this existing backup every time you do a backup and you send it to the same location so be aware of that one never use your committed backup drive for a manual backup you will mess things up you must send it to a new location so that is very very critical so let's go ahead and do this I'm gonna send it to I'm gonna send it to a hidden share this is my C drive the access control is the NTFS and share level permissions that you are going to give this set of data I want it to inherit the NTF, NTFS permissions on this server so I'm going to put it on this E drive on this particular server and I just wanted to inherit whatever permissions are there if for some reason it was confidential data and it was uh, whatever you could change that inheritance and tighten that up so that only the users who credentials are provided in the next step would be allowed to access the backup data I'm gonna leave it as inherit go next it says um, there's already a folder with that name I'm you're gonna override it which would happen if you did a manual backup the second day and so we're gonna say okay and we're going to go ahead and launch the backup now this backup will actually uh, initiate through the network so we can see we've launched the backup and it is beginning the backup process and notice we're we're creating shadow copies of the volume so uh, via VSS is actually taking snapshots of each of the volumes and saving those and it's creating those copies so that we can begin the backup process notice the information that we see in the dialog box uh, we see the location for the backup we begin to see the data transfer we can come down here and begin to look at each of the items that we want backed up and we can see the status of their backup so it's very 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 nice allows you to see what's going on since this is a backup across the network let's go to task manager and let's go take a look at our network and we should see a lot of network traffic and we do we can begin to see traffic across the network 
uh, indicating that net, that backup process or that transferring of data uh, because of the backup that we've initiated. So we can begin to see this happening. It looks like it's working. So we can see the backup status and, and things are going well. This brings us to another function. How do I stop a backup? I can see that this backup is running. You can see that it, it is that if I want to if I want to close this wizard, it shows me the the status of the backup. So let me walk you through the process of stopping an actively running backup. So let's go to the start menu. We're going to go to the command prompt. We're going to right mouse click and we're going to elevate the credentials and run as an administrator. Say yes pull the command prompt and we're going to type in the command line tools for backup and those are WB admin and we're going to use the backslash question mark and pull up the various switches and arguments that run the WB admin tool this is the command line view of all the power and capability of the Windows Server 2008 backup and we can see that we have a stop job uh, switch or argument and it stops a currently running backup or recovery operation so at the prompt I'm gonna type in WB admin type in stop job that is all that we're going to do at the command prompt and hit enter and it says are you sure you want to stop the current operation and we're gonna type in yes and hit enter and it should stop this running backup and so it does it says the backup operation ended before completing we can now exit the command prompt and we can see that that backup failed open it up and we can see that the operation was stopped so that is that is how you're going to go in and stop a running backup is you're going to go through the elevated command prompt go to WB admin Lots of great tools there in order for you to configure backups right from the command line. This is how you're, these are the tool sets that you're going to use to schedule multiple backups. Some of you are going to take backups to another level. But what I am showing you are the basic fundamentals that OCPS TSRs are fundamentally expected to know and understand. You can take this to whatever level you want uh, if you have the technical skills.